Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's. In the last uh, three minutes, we had about 15 different technical difficulties. Apparently, Facebook is not allowing us to um, go live right now. So I'm hoping if um, hopefully everyone can go over to YouTube. <sighs> I was really calm until about five minutes ago. So I am hoping people are live and with us. Um, a few announcements. The, um, if you have another screen, you can go to our website. At the top of the website, there are three green buttons. There's a Sunday school uh, button. Mr. Liga put a um, VeggieTales video up there, and there are three activity sheets. You can click on that. The next tab, the middle tab, is a uh, bulletin button. So if uh, you want a bulletin for the entire service, you can click there. Unlike last week, I am not doing a bulletin stuff on the screen. The screen is only for people who are reading and singing and things like that. So um, you're welcome to follow along. If you can't do a second screen, if you don't have a bulletin, you could just go to the prayer book, or some of you may uh, just know it all by heart. The third tab is the coffee hour tab, and uh, about three minutes after the service ends, I will start our coffee hour and we can all just uh, sign on to Zoom. If you're on your device, which has, to Zoom, has Zoom loaded on it, you can just click there. Uh, if not, you can scroll down on the home page and find the number to call into. If you are on the home page, you will notice that uh, we have a calendar view. We have the what's going on today and the next three days. And that gets updated every single day. It's always today and the next three days. And it shows you the 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. Uh, services we have every day. It uh, shows you how to get there on YouTube or Facebook. It tells you where to go for a digital bulletin. Um, we also have our prayer groups that are meeting on Zoom at uh, Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. and Wednesday at 7.30 a.m. The buttons and the call information are right there. Tuesday night at 7 p.m., Mike McCormick on Facebook is doing music with Mike again. This past week, it was so good. I, uh, I cried, uh, I teared up twice. It was just, it was beautiful. I highly recommend it. And on Wednesday nights, we have a Bible study with the bishop, something the bishop's doing for the whole diocese. And we don't have the link for that yet, but when we do, it'll be there. Every link is going on the front page of the website. Um, before we get going, I just wanna say that the lessons for today are uh, very poignant. Um, the Old Testament lesson is the Valley of Dry Bones from Ezekiel, and the Gospel lesson is the Raising of Lazarus from the Gospel of John. And both of these lessons depict um, death and loss and grief and a sense of defeat. And that is sort of the, the whole story of the Bible. The Bible is not like every day is just better than the last day. The Bible is a story of, of defeat and loss followed each one by victory. And so you might, as you listen to Roger read the Valley of Dry Bones, as uh, you listen to the story of Lazarus, you might imagine us. Um, uh, as that valley of dry bones, as that corpse that is in the tomb and ready to burst forth. All right, 
I th I'm hoping all the technical difficulties are over for now. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Jesus said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. be with you and also with you let us pray almighty god you alone can bring into order the unruly wills and affections of sinners grant your people grace to love what you command and desire what you promise that among the swift and varied changes of the world our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Good morning. This is Roger. I bring you peace from your fellow believers in Mendham. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord, and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones. And he led me around among them, and behold, there were very many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, you know. 
Then he said to me, Prophesy over these bones, and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. I will lay sinews upon you, and will cause flesh to come upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone. And I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy, son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain, and they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up, and our hope is lost. We are indeed cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I will open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you into the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. Your word is a lantern to our feet. Let me just break in to say that if you are listening in on Zoom, I am so sorry. We uh, are having more technical difficulties. The audio that is supposed to be playing through the Zoom um, is not working. And I don't know why it was working earlier and it's not working now. I am hearing that, um, so you're able to hear everything that I say, you're not able to hear everything that everyone else is saying uh, on the videos. I am hearing that the YouTube connection is really good right now. If you are able to jump over to YouTube, I would highly recommend that. We're the Kujans, and we're going to be reading Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thy ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, O Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord, more than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope is in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Stay well. And this is the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his feet with her hair. 
Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus, Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, this illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus, after having heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and are you going there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of this world, but those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to awaken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought that he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead for your sake. I am glad I was not there, so that you may believe. But let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him while, G while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. Now, Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house consoling her saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again, greatly disturbed, came to the tomb it was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and 
Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Our sermon this morning is um, offered straight from Manhattan in the village, from our seminarian, Chip. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. And please be comfortable. I can't help but feeling when this is all behind us and I emerge from this shoebox that Joanne and I live in, I'm going to be a bit stinky, not unlike Lazarus. These past couple weeks have doubtless been frustrating for all of us. For my part, I'm all the more cognizant than usual that remote communication and introspective time don't exactly play to my strengths in ministry. What I've been ruminating over recently is the abstract nature of this whole quarantine situation. On one hand, I like the abstract solidarity and everyone agreeing to isolate themselves. There's something beautiful in the idea of everyone keeping their distance for the safety of others. But that's not really a substitute for being in this physical presence of others. I'm concerned that while this time may be an opportunity for us to broaden our means of reaching out to each other, it's not exactly bringing anything new to the table either. Something that has been at the center of my passion for the church is the village gathering aspect. When we communicate remotely under normal circumstances, we curate who we encounter. For example, I almost never talk on the phone with anyone other than my family. On the other hand, when I go to church, it's an opportunity to interact with more people than I can anticipate wanting to interact with. That's how we grow as a faith community. We have encounters we don't plan out in advance or select from a menu. I mean, how often over the course of the past couple weeks, if you wonder, how's Chip Rubendahl doing? But here I am, and we're doing pretty well. Joanne is pretty well equipped to work from home, and she hasn't murdered me yet. It's a surreal time for me now, though, because looking back 10 or 15 years ago, I led a much more physically isolated, plugged-in lifestyle that really didn't suit me. Actively moved away from that, um, is part of what led me to the church in the first place, visceral human communication in a digital world. That said, these are exceptional times. Likewise, today's gospel shows Mary, Martha, and Lazarus to be a rather exceptional family. Mary, of course, the infamous sinner and party crasher. What's always struck me, uh, struck out to me in this lesson, and especially on this occasion, is that Martha directly addresses the rhetoric of Christian immortality, and not as an answer to all problems either. The subtextual statement that she and Mary seem to be making here is that you took your sweet time getting here, and we want Lazarus back now. I know he will be resurrected on the last day, but what does that even mean? It seems clear that Jesus arrived precisely when he meant to and in resurrecting Lazarus, doing so for the glory of God. Case in point, we all remember the name Lazarus because of this event. Indicative of our shared resurrection, but still quite different from it, in particular because of the visceral immediacy of it. It's ironic that both this week and last week involve such visceral chapters in Christ's journey, healing a blind man with mud and saliva, and now calling another out from a physical tomb. These aren't things that we are to expect to happen, but nevertheless should resonate. 
What Martha challenges is the seemingly abstract nature of God's role in the world. She wants to see something she can put in her pocket. Martha and Mary both make the same statement to Jesus. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. I have to imagine that many of us are experiencing similar sentiments right now. As was the case then, Jesus always arrives precisely when he means to. And as it was with Martha, that piece of information may not bring a great deal of comfort or satisfaction. Something that makes us Christians and not simply people who believe in Christ is being united in flesh with Christ. That manifests in the Eucharist and also in our capacity for supporting each other communally. Recent circumstances have made it necessary that we do not gather as one body. My concern is that it pushes the Christian experience into the realm of the abstract and the symbolic. What I see today's lesson is saying is that we can't allow that to happen. And I don't think we will. Perhaps more so than many Lents before, this will be a great time of spiritual renewal for the church. When Jesus sees the impact of, impact of Lazarus's death on the community, he, for as far as I know, the only time in his journey, he cries. I don't think this is a story of divine powers changing the course of events, but rather of ordinary people making things happen through faith. When Jesus resurrects Lazarus, he calls him out and Lazarus comes out himself. I'm left wondering if perhaps I am not too focused on the visceral side of my own faith. How will we emerge from our tombs when this is all over? I'd like to think that we will do so as Paul might suggest in today's epistle, spiritually renewed. Amen. Together, let us proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Litany for a Pandemic. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy upon us. Spare us, good Lord, spare us your people, who you have redeemed with your most precious blood, and by your mercy preserve us through this crisis and forever. Spare us, good Lord, from all evil and wickedness, from disease and illness, especially this coronavirus. Good Lord, deliver us. From all ignorance and apathy, and from all willingness to engage in activities that could harm others. Good, Good Lord, Lord, deliver us. From all blindness of heart and from pride and sense of inv invincibility. Good, Good Lord, Lord, deliver us. We, your children, beseech you to hear us. O oh, good Lord, 
to look upon this world struck by pandemic and drive from us this disease. We, we beseech, beseech you to hear us, us good, good Lord. Lord. That it may please you to strengthen the weak, the elderly, and those with compromised immune systems. We, we beseech, beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That it may please you to give health and comfort to all who are already stricken with illness. We, we beseech, beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That it may please you to give patience and grace to all those who are in quarantine or who fear that they may have already contracted the virus. We, we beseech, beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That it may please you to surround those who are scared and fearful those who are overcome in anxiety and worry. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That it may please you to give wisdom and stamina to all scientists, biologists, doctors, and all who are working on tests, vaccines, and treatments. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That it may please you to uphold the doctors, nurses, and technicians who are treating and ministering to the sick, especially those who are putting themselves in harm's way. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That it may please you to uplift the clergy, the chaplains, and all those who are ministering to those who are in distress, those who are sick, and those who are dying. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That it may please you to guide the leaders of the nations of the way of the compassion and safety for all your children, especially the aged and the compromised. We beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That it may please you to give to your people a heart to love their neighbor through this time and to look after those who are most vulnerable. We, we beseech, beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That it may please you to support, help, and comfort those who have lost their employment and those who do not have the financial resources to bear this time. We beseech, we beseech you, you to hear, hear us, good Lord. Lord. That it may please you to help our young people grow in wisdom and knowledge even as schools and universities are closed. We, we beseech, beseech you to hear us, good Lord. That it may please you to heal the sick, lift up the stricken, and open the airways of those who have difficulty breathing. We, we beseech, beseech you to hear us, good Lord that it may please you to receive into your bosom those who have died from this disease and to gather into your arms those who grieve. We, we beseech, beseech you to hear us, good Lord. Lord. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. Son of God, we beseech thee to hear us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us your peace. We also remember those who um, are on our own hearts and minds, and for those who are on our prayer list, we especially remember Steve, Janine, Pam, Sarah, Carmen, Bill, Jack, Stacy, Judy, Anne, Jim, Lydia, Ruth, Les, Janet, Bobby, Marilyn, Melissa and Stephen, Stuart, Megan, Jan, Will, Andrea and Jeff, George, Anne, Alfred, Norm, Chip, Martin, Laura, Maggie and her children, George, Connie, Gloria, Allie, Gerald, Michael, Sebastian, Chia, Austin, Layla, Brian, Jeremy, Asia, Andy, Becca, Shelby, Marty, Paul, Stephen, Maureen, Bruce, Russell, Nancy, Emmy, Jane and Alex, Russell, Donnie, Jennifer, Bob and Amanda, Andrew and Megan, we remember those who are on the front lines of this pandemic, especially Louise Hale, Daniel, Sasha, Anna, Noah, Pat, Amelia, Tracy, Diana, Emma, Sally. And we remember those who have died, especially Jan Carter and Mary Bordeaux. We remember those who are serving our country at home and abroad, especially Andrew, Christopher, Garrison, Richard, Stephen, Patrick, Esteban, Jeremy, and Dan. And for those who are celebrating their birthdays both last week and this week, especially 
Leighton Batum, Gregory Heiner, James Heiner, Carol DeCoste, Martin Kendall, Anne Mian, Marilyn Liga, Don Jones, Hannah Solon, Scott Layton, Ryan Layton, and the anniversaries of Doug and Ann Post and Martin and Jean Kendall. The peace of the Lord be always with you. As we uh, prepare for Eucharist, um, Michael is going to sing a song. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You are the God of Ezekiel, who calls us from dust and bones and breathes in us new life. You are the God of Lazarus, who calls us from dark tombs and unbinds us. You are the God who loves us and gave us Jesus Christ, so that through believing in him we might see your glory. Therefore we join with all those living on earth and all who in faith have died and live again with angels and archangels and all of creation. We lift our voices in praise of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord. God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me.
After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with Lazarus, Mark, and all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. In union, O dear Lord, with the faithful at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are being offered to the Father, I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. I present to you my soul and body with my earnest desire that I may ever be united to you. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you and embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Oh, let nothing ever separate me from you. Let me live and die in your love. Amen. And grant, O Lord Jesus Christ, that as the hem of your garment, touched in faith, healed the woman who could not touch your body, so the soul of your servant may be healed by like faith in you, whom I cannot now sacramentally receive. Through your tender mercy, who lives and reigns with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. I do have a bit of a treat for you for uh, the last song, which is offered by She's at the Door, who came in yesterday. We were very careful. No one touched the same thing. We all socially distanced from each other, but uh, even with six feet in between us, uh, they were still able to make uh, a joyful sound unto the Lord. Thank you. 
Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you all so much, and have a blessed day, and uh, maybe see you tomorrow at 10 a.m. for morning prayer. God bless you.